we're going to look at an example and using the for loop. A lot of times, for like I said, the for loop is for um, loops where you're going to need a certain number of times for it to iterate in terms of counting. Right? So such as the loop we see in front of us here, um, it's going to loop 10 times as long as i is below 10. Right? And just outputs the value and multiplies by 2. But sometimes we want the loop to be not predetermined but determined by some maybe some user input. So we're going to add some input here. I'm going to add a variable x and we're going to prompt the user to enter that value. Alright, so I'll enter prompt them for how many times they would like to see the loop execute. Alright, and we do the cn to the x. So the x then is going to be replace this 10. <clears throat> so the user may enter 10, they may enter 5, right? whatever they're going to use. So now x is the um, thing that's going to set the limit of the number of counts. Alright, so simply running this program. Alright, so when it was 10, it automatically ran 10 times. So we'll run it once and we'll input a 10. Right, and we get the results we've gotten before with this loop in one of the other videos. So let's run it again this time. And we're going to use a different input. Come on, there we go. Alright, so let's only put 4. And we get 4 iterations of the loop. So now we're controlling how many iterations this loop is going to be done based on, in this case, user input direct value that they type in. It can also be based on a calculation for that matter. Let's add another variable in here. And we'll call, we'll add two more, y and we're in z in there. Alright, so we're still going to prompt the user for that. But then we're going to say z equals uh, x times y. Alright, and we're going to set y equal to 2. We'll just make this clean here. Put them on each on a line. Alright. And assign the value to z. We're going to let z control this now. Oops. Alright. So we, the, the concept is that how this variable is calculated it doesn't matter. It's user input calculation from a formula or something else going on in the program. It's just that it can be controlled by something else. So I'm going to enter 3, so 3 times 2 is 6, so it should run 6 times, which it did. Right, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. It gives you 6 times that the loop actually executed. So the loop doesn't have to be predetermined at compile time. Right, this is all based on something happening in the program, a combination of user inputs and some formula going on, right, an equation. This can also be an equation down in here where the z is, right? We could put this right in there also, right? We can eliminate this calculation if we wanted to by simply changing the z um, to that and get the exact same results if you were to run this. So you can change a lot of things. We know we can change the the incrementing portion here, right? With formulas and stuff of that nature. We don't have to start at zero, we can start at two, one, whatever value you want. Right? So those are the different possibilities or ways of controlling the loop. Now another way we can do this, right, this is always counting up. Well once we want to count down, let's go back to Z in here. Alright, this was counting up from zero up to whatever value Z calculates to be. Well let's change it a little bit. Let's count down. So now we're going to change this to Z so we start at our high value. And as we're going to go as long as I is greater than or equal to zero. And then we need to change this so that it's decrementing. It's not a whole lot of change, it's just now the order of the outputs can be very different. Right? Before it started at zero, now it's going to start at whatever the highest value is that's calculated. So again, if I type in three, three times the two should give me six iterations. All right. uh, we went greater than or equal to zero, so it's actually going to give you seven. That's why we see seven here. But you see it's controlled by this, and it's starting at the highest value, which is six. All right. So we can count up, we can count down. Either way, inside our for loops, 
works, right? Whichever way, maybe there's a reason you need to go from the high down to the low, right? So you would want to do something of this nature. Uh, sometimes people just like counting down instead of counting up. Doesn't matter. Right? As long as you're getting the right amount of iterations and you're using the values as needed, you're doing good.